Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new here, hi, I'm Debbie, and I make art videos. So today I wanted to take a stab at some Studio Ghibli art. I'm going to call it an animation study. You can call it fan art, but I don't know why we make the distinction between studying a classical piece of art, and we call that a study, and we do, when we do animation art, we call it fan art. Anyways. I think we got to change that. And uh, let's get into the drawing. So I started off this drawing with my trusty cold erase pencil, as I'm prone to do. Then I moved it into Procreate and uh, realized my proportions were actually quite wrong and fixed that up and did some line art. I've been enjoying this thing of doing the line art in Procreate and printing it out, and I find it works really well. I'm working on the Canson Mott Vol paper, which I think is a really good in-between medium grade watercolor paper, and I think the print came out great. I wanted to use my Holbein watercolors for this piece, and was pretty excited to give them a whirl, because I've only really done swatches until this point and this is a special edition set that I purchased last year and you can check the artist website I'll put the link down below might be still available so I decided that I was gonna try some masking fluid for this piece and I don't really use it that often but I feel like I should use it more often because it's quite a handy little tool and I did a little like tips video about it and I'll link it in the cards if you've never tried it before it's basically like a glue and it creates a little film on top of your area that you want to cover sometimes people use it to preserve their highlights and in this case I am using it to protect my foreground characters from the layers of washes that I am planning on doing. And that's what it looks like when it's dry. If you tilt your page, you can kind of see where the film is. They do make this in colored versions, often blue, and that's actually really handy because it's a little bit easier to see. The other thing I wanted to try out were my new brushes, and I placed them in the same order. This collection is by Higuchi Yuko and Holbein and I ordered two size 6 brushes, a flat and a round. I do have an unboxing video on my channel if you want to see the rest of this ridiculously cute collection that I ordered. So once I started mixing my colors, I realized I did it again. I picked a picture that was <laughs> really um, not low saturation, but just didn't have a lot of color. I keep doing this and I just don't realize it until I get to the point of painting. So uh, next time I'm gonna be like, get a checklist of different colors and be like, is there green in here? Is there orange, you know? <laughs> but regardless, um, I started mixing my blue because it's basically like this purpley kind of blue. I found it hard to make a color like that so I went with something a little bit more muted um, and I think I should have been using a palette with wells as opposed to this kind of palette because it's just easier when you're making a wash mix to have like a bigger amount of fluid to dip into. The majority of this painting ended up being layers of washes and in the end there were a lot of layers of washes <laughs> and uh, this was because of my inexperience with working like this or working this big. Um, if you're new to my channel, it's one of my goals this year to work larger, so I'm trying to work larger. And that means that, uh, well, this is probably 10 times the size that I would usually work because I'm used to working teeny tiny. And because of that, I think I'm also very like uh, hesitant in a lot of other ways and that even went into the realm of the intensity of my mix, like the wash that I created. I think it needed to be much more pigmented and because of that I ended up having to do so many layers in order to get the intensity of color that I was looking for. Some of that is because I actually maybe chose the wrong medium. I was trying to get 
the picture to look as close as I could kind of in values to the actual animation frame. And I think in the end, gouache would have been better suited for that. I'm glad I did this because I got to train a lot of different watercolor techniques that I don't usually use or I do, but just on a smaller scale so it feels different. For the majority of the time that I was working on this, I was basically learning to do washes. And this little portion, for example, I started too low. I've learned from doing this exercise that it's better to start at the top because water will naturally bleed down if you're working angled as I was. And you have better control of your wash that way if you use gravity to help you bring the little bead of water along. And even though I knew this, going into it, it was still like hard to build that habit as I was working. And sometimes mid wash, I would realize what I had done or where I had started incorrectly. And uh, it's just a habit too. It's a habit that you have to learn, but it's also a really good skill to practice and something I never really have needed to do let's say, because I was working so small that my washes never got into problems about flatness. So for clarification, what I mean by that is that the if you get the wash right, then the color is very even and you don't see any brush strokes in there. And that is ideally the case when you're doing something very graphic and clean. If you're doing something more spontaneous, then maybe brush strokes and stuff are part of the look. But if you're trying to get a nice flat, even lay of color, then practicing that technique and practicing like how you go across the page with the wash is really crucial actually. And sometimes it's less straightforward than you think because you have these little weird shapes and then you feel like, well, I should start over there where the shape gets weird. But it's almost always the case that you should start at the top and move to the bottom and you have to work quickly. So that's the other kind of tricky thing about it. As you get better at it, you'll know kind of how much to load your brush and how much paint you need on your brush to get through a certain given space. But often what's the case is that you'll be left with these little puddles at the end of your wash. And what I was doing is I would clean my dr brush or dry my brush up so that it's thirsty and then go back in and, and pick up that bead with my brush. Once I started layering more concentrated color, I realized how I should have had more concentrated puddles of color from the get-go and that would have avoided the amount of layering that I ended up having to do. Everything seemed very straightforward while I was working in one color of wash, but once I introduced another shade of blue, it suddenly got scary. <laughs> And I realized how I had to balance those color relationships. And it's funny how much it changes everything. And I really ended up having to adjust quite a bit. I haven't done an animation study or an animation copy in a really long time, like maybe since I was a kid. So this was fun and I did learn a lot, but I think I'd like to try something in gouache next time and a background, you know, I'm really into the backgrounds. That's something I would like to practice at. And I think it's a way to like get better at landscapes in a more cartoony way, which is a little bit more natural to me anyways. And in case you're not familiar with this movie, it's called Ponyo and it's really cute and you should watch it. But it's about this little girl who is actually a goldfish and she's imbued with some magical powers and she befriends this little boy. It's odd, <laughs> but also really beautiful. And the animation is amazing. I love the way things transition in and out of form throughout the movie. And I really was trying to get that with this little dolphin character here, get him as derpy as I could. Cause like, that's part of the fun of the movie for me. But this is a very beautiful scene 
where she explodes out of the ocean with all of these ocean creatures and the water transforms in and out of fish form and it's quite magical and quite explosive and one of my favorite scenes in the movie. I'm a big fan of animation and every time I look at a piece of animation that I really admire, you break down the scene and then you realize how much thought went into it, how much um, composition plays a big part in the legibility of the action and the legibility of the movement and this scene is no exception to that rule. Once I thought I was done with my millions of layers of blue or once I thought I needed to move on to like balance what I was doing, figure it out, I removed the masking fluid and I got this little um, rubber cement eraser and you can get it at an art supply store. They're usually just a couple bucks and I thought it was very handy so I could recommend this tool. Makes a mess of course, you gotta clean it up. Kind of annoying because it's sticky but uh, it worked well. I just have to kind of practice my precision. <laughs> Once I got some color on our main character, Little Ponyo, I felt like things started to make more sense to me and it felt like maybe I wasn't going to fail at this piece because I really did think I was there for a while. And just adding another layer of intensity of color made me have to go in and rebalance all of the background washes so I did have to go and tweak things afterwards but I got brave and I'm like I'm gonna add some gouache because why not this doesn't have to be just a watercolor piece and that helped and I really wanted to make sure that Ponyo jumped out so I tried to get her as chromatic as possible because um she is a goldfish after all and I ended with some colored pencils they just helped me to push out lines and get some contrast and make it feel a bit more finished. And as I was approaching the end point, I thought this needed a little bit more. And then I added some kind of like water droplets, like a whirlwind of water droplets around her. I just thought that because I had messed around with the composition a little bit, something was like a little bit off and that helped to bring it together I really think and I think it conveys her spirit her energy anyways oh and the brushes get a thumbs up from me I did almost the whole thing with that one round brush. Thanks for joining me and I hope you enjoyed the video. I definitely learned that I have a few things that I have to practice and um, I really enjoyed this. So I don't know why I've never tried to do Ghibli art before, but uh, I definitely want to try some more. So if you have a favorite movie that maybe you want to suggest, please let me know and leave it down in the comments. I'll see you at the next one. Bye guys. Thank you.